And here's so many more shabby sheep. Shabby. Here's so many more shaggy sheep. Shabby. I can't put it. Shabby. I'm trying to say shabby. Okay. Antiqued. There we go. Hey guys, welcome to TCR. I'm Sid. I'm Mike. And today I am going to be painting our bed. Um, we have not had a bed since we've been together. <laughs> 17 years. We have not owned a bed that has like a headboard and footboard. Yeah, never. We've just been on the mattress with the box spring and that's it because we could never decide on bedroom furniture. And when we bought our first house, we had to furnish the rest of it. So that became a priority and then our bedroom set just got bumped to the bottom of the list. Over the years, I inherited some furniture from my family and uh, that kind of ended up being our bedroom set. However, there was no bed. Right. So <laughs> one of our friends uh, was getting rid of theirs and we got a smoking deal on it. It's a really nice headboard and footboard, solid wood, um, but it's a dark wood and all the furniture in the bedroom is antique stuff that's, um, you know, kind of cream colored. And then the other pieces that I have in there uh, like our chest and some shelving units and stuff uh, were also a darker wood and I did a white chalk paint on them and then distressed them with sandpaper so that's what I'm gonna do with the head and footboard here um, I bought some chalk 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 paint cha 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 I bought some chalk paint I, Mike's gonna help me move the bed pieces out here I'm gonna go ahead and paint it and then tomorrow I'm gonna sand it and then I'm gonna put it together yeah and then we're gonna sleep on it. Yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe down all this furniture, make sure there's no dust before I actually start painting. The great thing about this type of chalk paint is that you don't have to sand it ahead of time or do anything like that. It's pretty much ready to rock and roll and then I'm gonna see how it how this wood takes it if I'm gonna to need to do two coats um, and let it dry before I distress it or if I can get away with just one coat before I let it dry and distress it. So let's get this wiped down. I already wiped down the big piece, the headboard. So I'm just gonna do the footboard now. So for this project, I'm gonna go ahead and wear some gloves just because I don't wanna get it paint all over my hands. Um, I'm going to use Deco Art uh, Americana Decor Chalky Finish Paint. This color is the uh, lace. It's just kind of a creamier white. It's not a bright, bright white. Um, I'm just going to use a nice, soft, slightly angled brush because I know I have some crevices in here. And then you're going to want some uh, fine 220 sandpaper for later on when you're ready to distress those edge edges and kind of let the wood come through just a hair. I really, really love that look. Um, it's like my favorite thing and I've done this to a lot of pieces in our house and so this is just the next one. I did get two jars of this. You do want to make sure you shake it really well or stir it really well before you use it. Um, you can, you know, pour it into something if it's easier, but I think it's for this type of project it's fine to just do it out of the container. So let's get started. great thing about the chalk paint is in some of the areas you can kind of already distress it so I won't really have to sand it that much which I like just want to make sure you get all of the cup corners covered that you want covered if you want it thick thick white then you do a thicker coat if you want it more showing through kind of like I have it right here then you leave it like that it's completely up to you you kind of build it as you go and really give it that kind of antique farmhouse look It's also really hard to screw up this kind of project. Um, if you're unsure of the color or you're not sure what you're doing, it's your first time painting a piece, try it on a piece of the wood that's hidden. Um, do a little test patch, kind of like if you were gonna, you know, test a nail polish or something. You know, just kind of test it out first and see what you think before you go, you know, balls to the wall and do the whole piece and go, oh my God, I hate it. And it was, you know, my grandma's antique that I'm trying to give new life to or whatever. You can do this in steps and that's okay. You can test it out, let it dry, sand it, see if you like it. You know, I could have totally done a little piece down here that would never be seen. Um, 
just to check it, check it out. But since I've done this so many times to so many other pieces of furniture, I really do know what to expect. So I don't have any anxiety about it. And depending on what kind of look you like, kind of be mindful of the kind of wood you're working on, the kind of surface that you're working on and which way the grain is going versus your brush strokes. Some types of wood and some types of surfaces, it's more visible than on others. Um, this one, it's not super visible, so it kind of almost doesn't matter. But I do, um, you'll see I kind of glop it on, but then I do kind of go back and then go in the same direction just to kind of even out any brush strokes that would be showing up. And this stuff does dry very quickly because it's chalky and thinner. So you can still build it, you can still wipe it off with a wet cloth if you make a boo-boo. If you like let's say I wanted to leave that little inlet plain wood or something, I could wipe it off with a you know wet cloth right now and it would be fine. Just keeping mindful of those brush strokes. And again, a lot of that'll go away once you hit it with the 220 sand. But I'm loving how that's looking so far. I'm really happy with it. Well, I'm out of paint, so I must be done, right? <laughs> so phase one is done. The paint is on and now I just have to let it dry. And tomorrow I can do a little bit of sanding, but so far I'm loving the way it's starting to look. All right guys, so it's day two. This has dried overnight. Um, I've decided not to do a second coat and I've got my 220 fine uh, sandpapers. This one's just angled, same, same roughness to it um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do the sanding on it to give it that kind of antiqued look and kind of what I like to do when I do this kind of project is I kind of like to focus on some of the edges and roughing those edges up a little bit um, and just making it kind of look a little distressed so that's sort of what we're going for here so I'm going to show you a little bit of how I do it and then I'll show you the finished product sanding everything the way that I wanted it sanded. Like I said, I like to focus on the edges um, and you kind of want to naturally distress where 
furniture would distress anyway, which is usually like the edges of things where it's gonna rub and some of the details. So you can kind of see how I did that there. I'm real happy with the way it turned out. Now we're ready to go uh, actually stick the mattress in it. Okay, so we got it moved into the bedroom and all put together. And I'm really happy with the way it looks. It goes really well with the other furniture in here. I do need to move that mirror up a little higher now because that bed is a lot taller than having no bed there before. So, but I'm super happy with it. It's a little bit taller than the just metal frame we had it on before. But I think it looks really good. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Here's some more fun antiquing projects. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you try it yourself. It's one of the easy things to do when you have a piece of furniture that you like, but you don't like the color of it. It's a super quick fix. And you can do the paint as thick or as thin as you like, depending on the look that you like and the amount of sanding that you want to do to it. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell so you get the notifications.